Hey guys, so this is the sculpting tutorial. This is Blender 2.8, so this should work fine for many versions to come. I will try to keep this quick and clear. So first, to make more space, we'll remove the timeline by dragging down. And then I'll right click here and flip this to the bottom. Next, press N and go to the view tab. Set the focal length of the viewport to 100. This will make it easier to see when we are close up. And now to navigate the viewport, middle mouse button to rotate, scroll wheel to zoom in and out, or hold control key and middle mouse. This is more precise, and shift key and middle mouse to pen. However, this is with keyboard and mouse. To sculpt, we need a pen and a tablet. So we need to come to edit, preference, input, and check emulate 3 button mouse. This will allow us to use the ALT key as the middle mouse button while using a pen. Next, go to key map and choose select with right so that we can actually sculpt on the mesh. With that done, I'll delete the cube by pressing X and select both the camera and the light. Press H to hide them. To unhide, just press ALT H or you can also click on this eye icon to do the same. Next, I'll press SHIFT A to add a UV sphere and press CTRL 2 to subdivide two times as you can see in the modifier here now take a look here this is the poly count and now we have 15,000 and if I disable the modifier we only have 960 and this is how the wireframe looks as you can see if I enable the modifier we have much more poly counts to quickly start putting down details I'll hit apply and let's get into scout mode. Now to navigate the viewport with a pen in my hand, hold the ALT and apply pressure to rotate, ALT and CTRL to zoom, and then ALT and SHIFT to pen. Now we're ready to scout. I'll pull this out to show the brush name. And this is the dual brush. We actually only need a few brushes to create a good scout, so I won't be going over every brushes. Go to the Active Tool tab and you will see here that the string has pressure sensitivity enabled by default if your tablet is connected. To change the radius signs, just press your bracket key. As you can see, the direction now is on Add, so if we start applying pressure on the mesh, we will add onto the mesh. I will change the viewport material to matcap and choose this red wax here. This will allow us to see the form better. And this is how the brush behaves if we start applying pressure. And if I hold control, it will subtract. If I change the direction to subtract, it will work in reverse. So without holding control, it subtracts and hold control to add. I will change it back to default. But right now, if I show the wireframe, you can see that the poly count hasn't changed, still 15,000. But for our scalp to appear more detailed, we need higher poly count. So we need to enable dynamic topology. This will allow us to change the body count as we sculpt. I will set the detail size to 2. Lower number equals more polygon added with each stroke. As for the detailing, I will leave it at relative detail. What this does is adding detail depending on the distance you sculpt from. So to demonstrate, this is how much it adds from this distance. And if I zoom out and do the same, you can see that the detail becomes much bigger. This can change the body count and I will try to maintain it around 1 million. For my laptop, it starts getting slow after 1 million. So to put it simple, try to sculpt bigger forms from afar and smaller details close up because bigger forms do not need high body counts to look nice. Next, let's look at symmetry. The X axis is enabled by default. You can turn it off to sculpt things that don't have symmetry and it won't show up on the other side. But let's say you forgot to turn it back on and you have done some work on one side. You can come to Remesh, select plus X to minus X because the right side is plus X and hit Symmetrize and that is fixed. Next, let's look at Clear Strip. I like setting the string to 1 to see the effect of the brush immediately. This is how the brush looks. 
and of course holding control will subtract as well. But now let's check out fall off. This curve here is basically the tip of your brush. Imagine looking at your brush straight on and this is the right half of it. To show this more obviously, I will choose the flat one here. As you can see, the edge is much sharper compared to the previous strokes. But I like to have something in between, so this one here works the best. And if I don't want a sharp edge, I can always smooth it out by holding shift key while stroking. And that is the same as using this smooth brush here. Clear sweep and smooth are the brushes that you will use the most often. Next is the inflate brush, which is useful sometimes to increase the size of an area. I use it with one strength. It works just like its name, to inflate. And then we have the crease brush. For this one, I'll change the curve to a dip. Like this to make the effect more defined. And I'll change the strength to 0 0.5. Holding control will create this sharp edge. Moving on, we have flatten which works exactly like its name as well. I'll up the strength to 1 to work faster. However, for this brush, if you change the curve to this flat setting, you will start getting weird texture like this. So I recommend using this second one here as well, like the Crest Sweep brush. It will give you a good enough control. Next, we have the Scrape brush, which is kind of the same as Flatten, but I use it to refine the surface instead of removing detail. Flatten works better if you want to erase out a lot. You can come to option here and check original normal. What this does is that you will flatten out the surface based on the first angle it touches and continue to flatten out if you keep your pen on the tablet. I imagine this could be useful if you are doing a sketch for hard surface stuff. Next is the pinch brush, which I'll also set the curve to a deep, similar to the crease brush. Also up the strength to 1. This brush is very useful to refine edge, and you can use it together with the crease brush to create a very clean edge. Like this. And then we have the red brush which also does exactly like its name. We use it to grab and pull the mesh. And this is very useful to quickly set the bigger forms before putting down details. However, for this brush, I don't recommend using other curves. As you can see, it creates this weird edge unless it's intentional. And it's even more obvious if I use the flat option. So just leave it at the default curve. Next, we have the snake hook which works a lot like the grab brush but stronger. I suppose you can use it to pull out a horn or something similar. Next is the rotate brush which I seldom use. I only use it to fix small details like corner of the eyes and lips. And lastly we have the mask brush. We use it to paint this dark spot which acts as a mask. So if we sculpt around it the mask area cannot be affected. You can also press Ctrl I to invert the mask. And now the mask area is flipped. This is also useful when you want to pull out the mesh on a certain area, like making a limb or any protrusion. To remove the mask, just press Alt M. And we didn't turn the symmetry back on, so I'll just click Remesh and it's fixed. So now that you understand these brushes, let's go back to the object mode and delete this. Start over with a new UV sphere. Control 2 to subdivide. Hit apply. Go into sculpt mode. 
select your active tool tab and you're ready to sculpt so now you can go to file default and click save startup file so every time you open blender you can immediately start sculpting try to get used to the brushes and start sculpting something simpler so that you can set your expectation low then you can slowly improve and make bigger things and of course get the good references to study from most importantly try to have fun in the process and you will go far so that's all for the tutorial i hope this is helpful get a pen and tablet if you don't have it yet and leave me a like if i help out i'll see you guys in the next one